Everybody praise the Lord. Calabar Church, I said praise the Lord. What a wonderful service today. A colorful service today. A global service today. And I pray that the power of the Lord will be manifested in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, choir. The King is coming. The King is coming. But there's something to think about. The people that know the King is coming, but there's a question that Jesus asked before he went away. He said, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? He didn't say, shall he find denomination? A church or religion or people going to church or people carrying the Bible when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth, the faith that brings salvation, the faith that brings holiness and sanctification, the faith that relies on the power of the Lord alone. Whatever challenge you have, whatever problem is in your life, the faith that holds on to Jesus Christ. And he says, he is my savior, he is my Lord, he is the solution to my problem. Not just coming to church, there are people who just come to church, come to church. He didn't say, shall he find church on the earth? Shall he find faith in the earth? That's why today I'm going to talk to you on signs and wonders that will come to you by faith. And as we believe on the Lord today, signs, wonders, miracles, power in your life in jesus name raise up those hands two hands to the lord in prayer father in the name of jesus i come to you today on behalf of your people and i pray lord you plant faith in every heart in jesus name and I also pray you plant the feet of everyone, the mind and the heart and the spirit, the soul of everyone on the faith that you expect him when you come on the final day in Jesus' name. Lord, today let your miracle flow everywhere, even in this morning service in Jesus' name. Bless all our children, bless all our youths, Bless all our adults and the various choirs from all the nations, those who sang and those who did not sing, those who are here to sing. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. Let the power of the Lord penetrate every heart today in Jesus' name. And when you come, I pray you'll find faith in every one of our hearts and lives in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a good calabar. Amen before you sit down. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to Isaiah chapter I say chapter 8 and I'm reading to you there from verse 18. I say chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 18. Look at what the Lord is saying. He says, Behold I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Look at that. Behold, I am the Lord. And he says, I. That's the Lord speaking. Although I say, was the first one talking primarily. And he's saying, he's got a wife, a prophetess. He's got children. And those children are named in a peculiar way. And they were to be signs and wonders to the land of Israel. Take it out of the hand of Isaiah. And let Jesus Christ speak to you and speak to me. Here the Lord himself is saying, Behold, I 
I the Savior, behold I, I the Redeemer, behold I, I the Lord and the children whom the Lord has given me. He was praying for his own disciples. He said, those who have given unto me, I gave them your word and they have accepted your word and they have known that I came from thee. I and the children and the disciples and the born again believers and the brothers and the sisters and the brethren whom thou was given unto me they are for signs and wonders anybody there for signs and wonders in this land in your location there in your family there in your surrounding there in every country we find those who listen to the word of God, those who accept the word of God, it says, Behold them, look at them, they'll be for signs and for wonders. And I come to you today, announcing to you that as we come today, you can behold, you behold Christ at Calvary, you behold Christ on the day of resurrection, you behold Christ as he ascended up to heaven, and then he says, everyone who beholds, everyone who believes, and is saved, and is born again, he becomes a child of God, and then God says, they'll be my sons, and they'll be my daughters. He says, every one of them, without exception, I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and for wonders in this land, on this earth. And I claim that for myself. I about you. I said, I claim that for myself. I am for signs and wonders. Everywhere I go, I am for signs and wonders. Everywhere I preach, I am for signs and wonders. Anywhere I stay, I am for signs and wonders. And today, this morning is coming your way. You'll be for signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Now, I'm talking to you today on the miracle of signs and wonders. The miracle of signs and wonders. I want you to notice uh, those three words. Number one, miracle. Number two, signs. Number three, wonders. They go together. And this morning, at the miracle power of the name of the Lord is coming your way, miracle in your life. Signs in your life, wonders in your life, in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, I'm looking at verse 4. Hebrews chapter 2, we're looking at verse 4. And he's talking, he's going to give us the three words I mentioned now. Look at this, God also bearing them witness, them who? Them, the sons whom thou has given me who are for signs and wonders in the land. It says, God also bearing them witness both with number one, signs, number two, wonders, and number three now, with diverse miracles and, and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. According to his will. You come in the will of God. The will of God is your salvation. You come to that will. The will of God is for your sanctification. You come into that will. The will of God is that you have the power and the strength to abide and to obey the word of God. And you come into that will of God, which is obedience to the Lord. Then, according to his will, miracle in your life. Signs in your life. Can you see how that Calabar amen is so weak? And then there have been wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Today, the miracle, the miracle of signs and uh, wonders. We're going to do something today. Now, when I say miracle, what does that mean? How can I show people? How can I bring out people that if I do what they did, 
they had miracles in their lives. I too, I will have miracles in my life. I'm going to spell out that word miracle, M. That's Moses, I, that's Isaiah, and R, that's Ruth, A, that's Abraham, C, that is Caleb, and L, that's Levi. Levi is another name for Matthew. And then E, that is Elisha. I'm going to line them up. I want to find out. These were followers of the Lord. And these were sons and daughters of the Lord. Behold these children that the Lord has brought into the kingdom. All of them without exception. They are for signs and for wonders in the land. And then as you look at what they did and what they said and how they believed. And you do the same thing. I'm telling you, if you go this way, power will run after you. If you come this way, miracle will run after you. If you're sitting down, miracle will sit down there with you. And if you stand up, miracle signs and wonders will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Today, you cannot escape the miracle power of the Lord. Moses, Isaiah, Ruth, Abraham, Caleb, Levi, that's Matthew, and Elisha. I will have my own portion. Say it aloud now. You'll have it in Jesus' name. How does that happen? Number one, believing like Moses. Believing like Moses. Number two, becoming like Isaiah. Becoming like Isaiah. Number three is beginning like Ruth. And then number four is belonging like Abraham. Number five, bearing up. When others say, no, it cannot happen. And then you speak up and you bear up and you stand alone bearing up like Caleb and then begotten like Levi then Elisha burning the bridge behind you like Elisha if you go through that with all your heart with all your soul you'll be a recipient of miracles and you hear my amen and you will be a dispenser of miracles you will receive and you will give it out in Jesus name let's go very quickly number one believing like Moses we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11 and I'm reading from verse 24 Hebrews chapter 11 we're looking at verse 24 by faith Moses everything he did by faith he came out of Egypt by faith. He led the children of Israel by faith. Water came out of the rock and it's by faith. And then he opened the Red Sea. That's by faith. He led them and they got manna to eat every day. And there was no lack during the time of his ministry. And everything was by faith. And if you will come and believe like Moses, you are going to have miracle following you every day of your life in Jesus. Jesus name by faith when he was come to years he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter he said no if you're going to be a man of faith a man of signs and wonders a man of miracles you have to know what to say no to when the devil comes he wants to make you a slave a servant you'll say no when Pharaoh comes, wants to make you a slave, a servant, even a son, you say no, you cannot serve two masters. If you're serving the Lord, you cannot serve Pharaoh at the same time. And when he came to years, the year of decision, today you come to a day of decision in your life. 
and you choose where you will go if you're going to follow this way with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and you deny yourself of what the world is offering you and what Pharaoh is offering you and what Satan is offering you and you say I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back the Lord is preparing another kingdom I will be there no turning back no turning back all my friends may forsake me I will follow the Lord no turning back no turning back and you are able to say no to the flesh and no to the world and no to the prince of this life miracle will shoot up in your life even today in Jesus name and look at verse 25 in verse 25 it says choosing rather it was a choice a choice it's not that mama is going to church and following her Papa says, I'm a member of this uh, church, and therefore I'm following him. He chose by himself. The Lord puts two ways before you. There is the broad way. Everybody can do whatever they want to do. But there is a narrow way that takes you and Jesus, and then uh, there will be salvation. There will be peace, and there will be life, abundant life, and there will be victory, dominion in your life. And you choose to follow that narrow way. When you make that choice, is the greatest wise choice you can make in your life. Power will attend to you. Miracle will attend to you. And that's what Moses did. That's why we say believing like Moses, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, than to enjoy the drinking and the dancing and the nightclubs and the occult and the magic and everything in Egypt to enjoy that for a season. said, no, I come out of darkness and I come to the light. I'm going to live and abide in the light. When you do that in your life and you close the door to all those gangs, you close the door to all the occultism and then you come to the Lord, you say, I choose to follow the Lord and the way of life, no power will ever overcome you in your life. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect on the recompense of the reward. And then in verse 27, we're told by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Seeing him who is invisible. He knew that the invisible always saw him. Whatever he said, Wherever he went, whatever he did, the invisible one, the immortal one, the omnipotent one, and the omniscient one always saw him. And then he himself said, the Lord sees me every time and I see the invisible everyone. When sickness comes, he says the healer is there even though he's invisible. And when there's any miracle needed, he says the miracle worker is there. Even though he appears invisible, when you live like that in your life, you are going to be victorious. I am going to be victorious. And no power will be able to conquer you any time in your life in Jesus' name. Number two, becoming like Isaiah. Becoming like Isaiah. Look at Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 5. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You know, Isaiah did not confess the sins of other people. There are people in this land, there are people in our country, there are people in every country who they say our country is bad because leader so-and-so is bad, because counselor so-and-so is bad, our local government does not have everything else to have, and it is the fault of the senator, 
they confess the sins of other people if you're going to become a miracle carrier if you're going to become a partner to the miracle worker the lord jesus christ you leave all those excuses and you are not confessing the sin of the pharisee the sin of the sadducee and the sin of other people you come like i say who is me for i am undone because i am a man upon clean leaves why is there no power in your church? Is the fault of so and so? Uh -uh, it's your fault. Why do we not see miracles everywhere in your locality? Is the voice the fault of so and so? No, it's your fault when you come. Like I say, and you want to become like I say, and you look at your prayerlessness, and you look at your deadness. And you look at your uh, not feeling anything. You are just there. You come to church and you go back from church. And you are not spending time in fervent prayer, in intercession. And you are not pleading and praying for the power of God to come down. And you are only thinking uh, when the pastors are all right, everything will be all right. I am sick because the pastors are not praying for me. I am this because they are not helping me. When you turn away from all of them and then you become like I say you say I know the deadness of my heart and I know the carelessness of my life and I know the carelessness of my own tongue of my own speech and you say like I say I am a man upon clean lips I dwell in the midst of the people upon clean lips for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts look at verse 6 we're told they flew one of the seraphims unto him having a life coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar then in verse 7 it says and he laid it upon my mouth when well, you don't dodge the fire of that coal and the fervency of that word and the fervency of what the Lord is pointing out to you, when you don't dodge that, when you stay calm there, and you stay receptive there, and the fire from the altar touches your heart, touches your soul, pierces into the very blood, has touched thy leaves, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin apart. Today, if you allow him, it will purge you. It will purify you. Everything unclean, everything defiling, it will take away. And then you will hear the voice of the Lord in verse 8. In verse 8 it says, And I heard, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? It will send you. I said it will send you. I'm just a young person. The Lord cannot send a person like me. He sent Joseph. He sent Samuel. The Lord will send you. I'm just a woman. The Lord cannot send a woman like me. He sent Deborah. He sent Esther. The Lord will send you. I'm just a man. I'm too old now. The Lord cannot send me. He sent Zacharias at the time of old age with Elizabeth. And they gave back to John the Baptist that brought the word of the Lord unto the people as a forerunner of the Savior of the Lord. If you send them, the Lord will send you. He will send me. What are you? He will send you in Jesus' name. Somebody said, you are 80 years already. Don't you think it's too late now? The Lord cannot send you anymore. I said, you are not reading the Bible. He sent Moses at the age of 80. And the Lord has sent me to you today. Power in your life. The pardon of God in your life. And great things will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. The Lord will send you in Jesus' name. Believe like Moses, become like Isaiah beginning like Ruth.
beginning like growth. You have to begin somewhere. It tells us in Ruth, look at Ruth chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14. And he lifted up their voice and went again and upper kissed her mother in law, but Ruth clave unto her. Ruth and Opa had been together in the same family, Marina, two brothers, one here, one there. Eventually, those brothers died, their husbands died, and then Naomi wanted to go back to the land of Israel, to the land of blessing. And then Opa and Ruth said, We will go with you. And Naomi said, You cannot go with me because you're still young and you're ladies, you're widows, young widows. If you follow me, there's no husband. I don't know how they will receive you when we get to the land. The people are so many. That's what some people say in deeper life there. If I join them, if I stay with them, Nobody will recognize me, but I want to stay in a small little church where you have 13 or 17, and then everybody is recognized. And so Opa went back. I will not go back. You didn't say that with decision. You didn't say that with determination. Opa went back. I will not go back. Kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth cleave unto her. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. When you clinch to the Lord, when you cleave to the Lord, when you abide with the Lord, when you say, I come. I come to the Lord and I will never go back again. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and she said, Now me said, Behold, thy sister in law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister in law. Look at verse 16. And Ruth said, And Ruth said, You see, there are people, when we say we're going to pray now, they just stand there. Like a log of wood, they say nothing. Other people are praying. They're saying, I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. I will never turn back again. Purge me and cleanse me. Take away all my sin and all the weakness in my life. Take all the weaknesses away. I want to abide in the Lord. While other people are praying like that fervently, they just keep quiet. Ruth did not keep quiet. If you're going to be a partaker, I'm going to be a partaker. What are you? You'll be a partaker in Jesus' name. You will not keep quiet. I say, you know, the people don't go yet. The service is not finished. Like Opa, they go away. They are not thinking of what they have heard. They are not bringing what they have heard to the Lord in prayer. Ruth stayed there. And then Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee, not to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go. Whither thou goest, I will go. I didn't hear your amen. That's what to tell the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I go to heaven and I will come again and receive you unto myself. So that where I am, there you will be also and when you are praying you are telling the lord i will never leave you i will never forsake you that heaven you have gone whither you have gone i am going there i will see you in heaven what is the person i'm talking about there i will see you in heaven whither you go there i will go and whether thou lodgest there i will lodge my people Thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. Amen. Amen. Verse 17, Whither thou diest, will I, will I die? Where thou diest, there will I die, and there will I be buried. And the Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death but thee and me, and then in verse 18, when she saw, 
Naomi saw that that she, Ruth, was steadfastly minded to go with her. Then she left speaking unto her. And they went through together. Look at this, look at this. The blessing that Ruth received was even greater than the one Naomi received. You are in for blessing. You are in for salvation. And you are in for all the inheritance of the kingdom in Jesus' name. When you believe like Moses, when you become like Isaiah, when you begin like Ruth. Look at the next one now, belonging like Abraham. Belonging like Abraham. Abraham lived in the Old Testament, but God gave him a special place in his heart. God will give you a special place. If you do like Abraham, look at, look at uh, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, and I'm reading here from verse 8. By faith, you know it's by faith. You will not see the future. All that the Lord is telling you, you know, believers will say sin is believing, but believing is sin. Everything you have heard in this signs and wonders crusade, you will see in your life. Look at that, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8, by faith, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. He obeyed. He had not been there before. He obeyed. He was hearing the call for the first time. He obeyed. He knew God is calling me. And God is calling you today. He calls you to repentance. He calls you to salvation. He calls you to sanctification. He calls you to a worthy walk with the Lord. And because he's calling you, and he calls you to repentance. He, came, he said, I came not to call the righteous, the self-righteous, but I came to call everyone who will realize he's a sinner. I came to call them to repentance. I came to call them to say, turn away, turn away from your sin, from your transgression. Why will you die, O children of Israel? And as you stand up, and you respond to that call and say, I hear his voice. He's calling me out of darkness. He's calling me out of sin. He's calling me out of evil. He's calling me from my past life. And he wants me to come into a new life. I respond. That's how he called Abraham. And Abraham responded. He calls you to salvation. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And then you come, the grace of God will come to you. The grace that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. And that grace is teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live righteously and soberly and godly in this present world. As you hear that call, the call to repentance and the call to salvation and the call to holiness, called to sanctification, this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that it says, be ye holy, as he who has called you is holy. And you respond to that call, repentance, salvation, sanctification, and holiness, like Abraham responded, the power of God will show up in your life. Look at this, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. Today, you will obey. I will obey. He obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went. And then, any time after that, they mentioned Abraham. Abraham was the friend of God and you'll be a friend of God you'll be a child of God 
all the wall of partition between you and God, everything will be broken down in Jesus' name. And now, bearing up like Caleb. Bearing up like Caleb. You see, there are people, once other people have spoken and they said it's not possible, we cannot go up there, we cannot serve the Lord. Nobody can live without sin. That's what they say. Everybody will be chewing tobacco all through their lives. Everybody will be drinking rum and drinking alcohol all through their lives. Even so and so is drinking and so and so is drinking and I cannot be free. Once they hear other people saying that, they say, well, everybody says we cannot be free. They too cannot be free. Look up here. I am free. Say that aloud, I am, free. I am free. And you know, they say everybody must bend down to the idol of the locality and they must worship the idol of the community. And if they don't worship, you know, some bad things will happen to them. I hear of so and so, I hear of so and so. So, what can I do now as everybody is worshiping? I too, I will worship, I will stand apart. I said, I will stand apart. Whatever others do, others may, but I will not. The Lord will give you that courage in the heart of Caleb and pass that courage into your life in Jesus' name. And you bear up like Caleb. Look at Numbers chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 4. Numbers chapter 14. We're looking at verse 4. And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. They want to backslide. I will not backslide with them. I said I will not backslide with them. They want to become slaves again. They want to go back to Pharaoh again. And they want to tell Pharaoh, We're sorry that we're left. We have come back now. You want to put rope in our, on our neck? Here is our neck. You want to put rope, handcuff in our hands? Here we are. You want to tie us in our feet? Here we were. Here we are. There are people like that. They go back to the world. They go to tell the man in the shrine. They said, their Papa, they call him their Papa. They said, we're well, sorry, we let. I am not sorry. I said, I am not sorry. You, know, you see that a girl, that lady, she needs a 10 naira. She needs a 100 naira. And she cannot pray to the God of heaven. And then she goes to the, you know, old sin partner. And the sin partner said, uh -uh, I thought you said you are born again now. I thought you said you have, you have gone with Jesus. Why are you coming to me again? And then she opens our, her mouth and said, I am sorry. He says sorry to the old sin partner. He said, I have come back. Since I left, I never went back there. And I am still standing. And you will stand in Jesus' name. So all those people said, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, wrench their clothes. Look at verse 7. It says, And they speak unto the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. Then in verse 8, look at what he said, the Lord, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it unto us. Unto us. I'm one of them. Unto us. I am one of them. A land 
which floweth with milk and honey. In verse 9, it tells us, Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. The Lord is with us. Fear them not. Anybody afraid there? Fear them not. You come to the Lord, He will be your defender. He will be your redeemer. He will be your protector. And every evil will be shielded away from you in Jesus' name. That the man Caleb, he bore it up. He stood up. His shoulders were squared. He said, you want to go back to Egypt? No, I'm not going back to Egypt. I'm going to Canaan land. I'm going to the promised land. And that man Caleb reached that promised land by faith, by the grace of God. He reached there. I will reach there. I said, I will reach there. Look at Joshua chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 10. Joshua chapter 14, we're looking at verse 10, and now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 40 and 5 years, even since the Lord spake the word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and lo, I am this day first come, and five years old. In verse 11, it says, As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. And my strength, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, but to go out and to come in. Verse 12, it says, Now, therefore, because I'm faithful now, therefore, because I keep on following, even when other people were saying uh, they cannot follow, now therefore, give me this mountain. The Lord will give you the mountain. You will climb every mountain. You will move any mountain you want to move. And the power of God will never decrease or cease in your life in Jesus' name. El begotten like Levi. Begotten like Levi. We're coming to uh, Matthew, Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, we're reading from verse 27. And after these things, he went forth. And he saw a publican named Levi sitting at the reception, at the receipt of customs. And he said unto him, follow me. And thank God he heard the voice of the Savior. And thank God here today you are hearing the voice of your Lord. I said you are hearing the voice of the Lord. And he says, get up, whatever it is you are doing. However much you enjoy where you are, the customs, it says, there's something better for you. My brother, there's something higher for you. My sister, there's something greater for you. And it says, get up and follow me. I pray that that thing God is going to give you as you follow the Lord, you will not miss it in Jesus' name. And then in verse 28, we're told, and he left all. He didn't say, I'll hide this other sin in my bosom. I'll hide this other evil in my bosom. I'll hide that other trade should in case I will need it later. He left all and rose up and he followed him. That's how he became a disciple. From a disciple, he became an apostle. And then the Lord said, not only that, all you that have followed me in this generation, you will sit on the 12 thrones and you will be judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And their names, the names of all those apostles 
are reaching at the gate of New Jerusalem. Your name will be there. My name will be there. My name will be there. When you, when you become begotten, born again, like Levi. Now, Elisha, born in the bridge behind you, like Elisha. What does that mean? You came to the Lord, and you went through the bridge, over the bridge. And then you look back, you say, I will never go back on that bridge anymore. And you burn that bridge behind you. And you say, I'm not going back. Whatever happens, I am with the Lord. I will forever be with the Lord. That's what Elisha did. That's how he received the double portion of the power of the Spirit of God upon Elijah. A double portion is coming upon your life. What are you? Double portion. Shout it out. Look at First Kings chapter 19. And I'm reading from verse 19. So he departed hence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by and cast his mantle upon him. A new mantle is coming upon your life today. Mantle of power. Mantle of miracle. Mantle of signs and wonders. Mantle of favor with God is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. In verse 20, they were told, and he left the oxen and he ran after Elijah. How would Elijah know that he had decided to follow? He put his faith, his decision into action, into expression. And he ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother. What he was saying is, when I was coming to the farm today, I didn't tell them, Dear mommy, I will not come back. So they will not be looking for me. Let me just tell them, I am going on with the man of God. And you are going on with the Son of God. You are going on with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you come to follow the Lord today, you will never go back again in Jesus' name. And he said unto him, go back again. What have I done to thee? Verse 21. In verse 21, and he returned back from him. And he took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and he went after Elijah and ministered unto him. And since that time that he came to Elijah, he never went back. I will not go back. He never looked back. I will not look back. He never even thought, is this all I'll be doing here? Pouring water on the hand of Elijah? You don't I have something greater to do? I remember when I used to have all the 12 yoke of oxen. No, he never thought about that. He said, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The walls behind me and the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Whatever happens and whatever does not happen, I am following, I will never go back. You will never go back in Jesus' name. And then the day came when Elijah was to be taken to heaven. And Elijah said, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me unto Bethel. He said, as your soul liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave you. 
until I get that thing I'm looking for. And then he came to Bethel, and then he said, The Lord has sent me to Gilgal. I'll not leave you. And they went on together. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. And then he went there, and he crossed Jordan. And then Elijah said, Elisha, ask me what you want before I be taken away from you. And the man did not say, whatever you want to give me, give me. I don't have any request. I'm just like that. I don't have any backbone. I don't have anything to ask. Whatever it is, I am there. And then they are waving their hands like this. You know, there are some people that come to church and they don't have any intention. They don't have any request and they don't have anything in their heart. They are asking the Lord. Elisha said, I'm not like that. I'm asking you something. I'm asking what another person had never asked you. And I need a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah said, you have asked a hard thing. If you see me when I'm taking up, it shall be so. If you don't see me, it shall not be so. And then he kept on looking at Elijah. And the chariots of fire came from heaven. And and took up Elijah and then he said my father my father I see you on the chariots of Israel and the Elijah dropped the mantle and he took that mantle and he then folded it his own mantle all the mantle of old life and the mantle of old weakness he removed that and threw that away and he came to Jordan and he said where is the Lord God of Elijah and he smote that river and the river parted in two and the people said the power the spirit of Elijah has come upon Elisha it's your turn today I said it's your turn today but the Lord is saying as we're going to receive that that you are going to believe like Moses meek and mighty Moses the meekness and the might of the Lord will come upon your life and then you become like Isaiah incorruptible Isaiah interceding Isaiah you make special you make your life a life of intercession and a life of incorruptibility nothing will corrupt you Satan will not corrupt you. The world will not corrupt you. And then number three, you become a ransomed, righteous Ruth. You are ransomed, you are redeemed, you are saved, you are born again. And like Ruth, you live a righteous life because of the ransom of the Lord. Like Abraham, you become approved and appointed. Approved and appointed. The Lord approved of Abraham and he appointed him. And now we say God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, and God will be your God. Whatever word you utter out of your mouth, you will decree a sin. It shall be established in Jesus' name. And then you become a confident, courageous Caleb. Confident and courageous Caleb, nothing will weaken your need. Nothing will weaken your background. You will say until I'm now 40, until I'm 50 until I'm 60, until I'm 70, until I'm 80, until I'm 85, I'll still be going strong, confident in the Lord, courageous in the Lord. Give me this mountain. No mountain will ever conquer you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Levi is the liberated, loyal Levi. Liberated from sin, liberated from the old trade, liberated from everything he was doing before, but now liberated following after the Lord. And he was loyal and the power of an apostle came upon him and the power of an ambassador will come upon your life and then you be like Elisha exceptional empowered Elisha exceptional all those 50 professors of the prophets they said Do you know the Lord is going to take your master away from your head today I know he told your peace he didn't join them he was extraordinary he was exceptional and then the power from on high came upon him empowered now all these people they have come and they have gone but then they left all their mantles behind they said 
Where are you? If you are ready to have to be a carrier of miracle, if you are ready to be a possessor of signs and wonders, it's now in your hand. If you rise up now and you say unto the Lord, Lord, I am here today, I am available today, everything you have done through them, start with me. I want to be a special person in the hand of the Lord today. This is your chance. This is your chance. Stand up now and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Here am I. I believe. I believe. I believe. Like Moses believed, I become, I want a coal of fire to touch my mouth. No gossiping again. No backbiting again. No deception again. No lying again. Touch my sin. Purify my heart and let a new thing happen to me. Should it be like Ruth? Don't follow Opa. Opa has gone back and you set your affection and you set your face on the Lord like Ruth set her face on Naomi. And you say, I will not go back. Welcome. Welcome into the kingdom and welcome into the city of the living God. Come, come, come. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, like Moses, I will be. Like Isaiah, I will be. Like Ruth, I will be. Like Abraham, appointed of the Lord, approved of the Lord. He said, come out, and I come out. And I then go in the direction of the land of promise. The Lord is calling you. And like Caleb, don't allow your backbone to be broken. He says, come. All the others, they wanted to choose a captain. And they wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted to volunteer to become the slaves of Pharaoh again. But Caleb said no, Joshua said no, I'm following the law. I will never look back. I will never go back. I have decided, I have decided to follow, to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Like Levi, like Levi, like British, loyal. Loving, I love the Lord. Nothing will drive me back. Tell the Lord, like Elisha, exceptional, extraordinary, empowered, endowed, endued with the Spirit of God. You decide, you determine. You dedicate yourself to follow the Lord. The Lord will stand by you. The Lord will be with you. That they were possessors of miracles, power, signs and wonders. You be a possessor as well all the days of your life. Your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me good, global, crusade, caliber, amen. The goodness of God be upon you. The grace of God be upon you. The power of the Almighty encircle you. The umbrella of His security be upon every one of you. Your way from today will be clear. All the pebbles on the way, all the stumbling stones on the way, the angel of the Lord clear them out of your sight in Jesus' name. From today, as you have decided, you will be strong. Your backbone will not be broken. Your eyesight will not be deep. Your mind will not be weak. 
I will see you with on the side of Moses, on the side of Isaiah, on the side of Ruth, on the side of Abraham, on the side of Caleb, walking along with Levi. And when there is time to manifest power, I will say the power upon your life, like upon Elisha, in Jesus' name. If you are the person I'm talking about, raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the call you have given us today. And I pray for those who are repenting, responding to the call to repentance. Oh Lord, receive them in Jesus' name. Your salvation for everyone. Your sanctification for everyone. I will pray, O oh Lord, you make everyone soundly safe and strong in Jesus' name. I pray as you have appointed them today to be your children, approved of them. I pray that the approval of heaven will never live their lives in Jesus' name. As you have liberated them, that liberation will be permanent in Jesus' name and the power to go and live loyal, a loyal life, a faithful life unto the Lord, even to every one of them in Jesus' name. I pray that spirit of the conqueror, that spirit of power, that spirit, that spirit of the overcomer will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. Sickness under your feet. Affliction under your feet demon possession under your feet weakness under your feet become extraordinary become exceptional become empowered like Elisha in Jesus name go in the strength of the Lord go in the might of the Lord and I pray that everything we've heard today will be embedded and planted in your heart and life. And then you'll give expression to your faith and you'll give action to your faith. And nothing will ever conquer you again in Jesus' name. The joy of the Lord be your strength. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray.